Audio YouTubers will talk about preamps sounding warm, full, flat, dull, neutral or coloured and many other descriptive names. But how do these budget-friendly audio interfaces actually measure? Do they have flat EQ responses? Do we see the coloration? In this video, we're going to measure the EQ linearities and the noise flaws of these five popular audio interfaces and discuss what's really important. And while measurements are important, I have some different perspectives you'll want to hear at the end of the video. To measure the EQ linearity of these preamps, I ran a 1 kilohertz sine wave out of Plugin Doctor out of my Apollo X6 at minus 6 decibels. This is so each interface received an identical signal to maintain a fair test. I've then increased the gain on the preamp until the signal meets unity or zero in the linear analysis tab. And here are the results. It turns out all the devices are remarkably similar. They are all beautifully flat, even preamps. The Evo, Lewitt and Volt drop off sharply at 20 kilohertz, where the Audient and Scala extend to approximately 22 and a half kilohertz. The Evo and Audient have some slight fluttering flutterations in the top end to the tune of about 0.2 dB, but this won't be audible. All the preamps perform well down to 10 kilohertz, where the Lewitt rolls off at 20 with a slight half a dB dip between 20 and 50. Again, unlikely to be audible. So all in all, these are virtually identical. What do you think about this? Is this a surprise to you? Did you have different predictions? Let me know in the comments. These images, as well as measurements of the Scala Air Mode and the Volt Vintage Mode, are available to download for free from the members area of my website. Now, beyond EQ curves, an important consideration of preamps is the noise floor. This is the sum of all the self-generated electrical noise a device produces when in operation. Ideally, we want this to be as low as possible, so not to be audible in quieter recordings. The only way to measure this is to route a signal from each device's own outputs this time back into itself through the preamps. This internal loop allows us to measure the internal device noise. To make this as fair a test as possible, again, I sent an analog typical minus 18 dB 1 kHz sine wave out of Plugin Doctor. I then maxed out the outputs on each device and adjusted the preamp gain to unity in the linear tab. In most cases, this required about 40% input gain on each preamp, so plenty of headroom before introducing any preamp noise. What we're looking for here is the noise and harmonic content of each device. Anything below minus 125 decibels is very, very good. To put this in perspective, these are the noise floors of my Neve 1073 LB and Wes Audio Phoebe preamps with some noticeable harmonics. The Evo and Audient perform the best here with a noise floor of approximately minus 135 to 140 decibels. The Scarlet and Volt are very similar at around 130 and 125 below. The Lewitt Connect 6 has a noticeably higher noise floor, but this is still a very acceptable level and shouldn't cause any problems. Now, all this measuring and testing is very well and good, but it does come with a few important caveats. Numbers and graphs don't necessarily represent how some things sound. For example, in the analog to digital comparison world on YouTube, there are YouTubers who have compared analog hardware through something like uh, Access Analog or with their own pieces against the digital versions of those pieces of hardware. And statistically and measurement wise, they may be identical, they may look the same. But in my experience of analog versus digital, they just don't sound the same. Analog has a fullness. It has a, a 3D sound. Now, my podcast co-host Paul Third will vehemently disagree with me. I can hear him shouting at me in the comments already. This is just my opinion, but there's many more things that go into how a device sounds. The preamps being one of them. How those preamps are integrated into the rest of the device is also very important. For example, the Scarlet and the Vault have the same Cirrus Logic CS54 
to, I can't remember the product name, but they have the same converters, but how they've been incorporated means the devices sound quite different. However you look at it, the outputs on the Volt and the headphone amplifier just sounds better, but it's largely the same parts, components. As for the preamps, they also sound better on the Volt. And if you don't believe me, I've got this video where I've compared them and the Volt just sounds better, but statistically, from the measurements we've seen, you'd think the Scarlet would be better, but not necessarily. And the final thing to consider, and this is arguably more important, is how far up the frequency spectrum these preamps capture. Now this will potentially come into play when mixing using digital EQ plugins, where we can introduce something called aliasing. I won't go into this in this video because it's a vastly complicated subject, but for a full explanation of where I've called it aliasing, I know that was wrong, watch this in this video here. But in essence, digital EQ plugins can cause artifacts in a process called aliasing. It's a digital realm thing only worth being aware of, but a long story short, the higher up the frequency response we can capture, the fewer or lower the number of artifacts we're likely to introduce into our audio when mixing. By artifacts, I mean like pops and clicks and generally unwanted noises. Now yes, with all that said, it's great to get scientific about interfaces and preamps and so on. And there are some great channels that do this very well. But what's more important, I think, is how these sound to you. If you think it sounds good, then it is good. And what's even more important is the fact that the only interface you need is the one you have when inspiration strikes. And on that bombshell, I've been Ed Thorne. It's been emotional. I'll see you on the next one.